It's so beautiful. <laughs> I just, I love that scene where they pull up to the drive through <laughs> and Spacey's <laughs> characters in the window. <laughs> like, yeah. You don't get to tell me what to do any more. <laughs> it's so nice. I love that scene. Uh, uh, but uh, yeah, and, and you know, Peter Gallery is great. He's a musical theater guy. He loves musical theater. They, they said that he would walk around the set singing and like making up songs about people and stuff like that. His character is great. He's a good dad. Everybody wants Sandy Cohen as their dad. Uh, or at least I did. I don't know about you, but um, do you think he was a good dad? I think he was a pretty good dad from the perspective of teaching Ryan and Seth the better way. He, he, he would help. He was a good dad in helping them to make the right choices. He was a terrible dad when it came to oversight supervision, (laughs) 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 like actually laying down the law or establishing rules or any sense of order. He was terrible at that. He, he would try and guide them to make the right decision for themselves. Right. Yeah. I think that's good. That's the accurate. (laughs) Cause I, I would think that, uh, you know, just setting boundaries is, yeah. uh, it was like tough for that household, right? It's, it's <laughs> tough for all of these households, apparently. These kids are <laughs> feral. They're wandering around with no supervision, no oversight. There's this, I, I've got, the, I've got a bullet point that just says absentee Perry parenting. It's like, <laughs> the, I think it's the episode, where is it? Uh, it's the episode where, I, I think it's the one where Luke gets shot. Both uh, Seth and, uh, or I'm sorry, not Seth. Um, Sandy and Kirsten are home and they get asked like where where Seth is. And they're like, oh, I don't know, but I'm sure he's fine. And he's he's been involved in a shooting at a party. <laughs> and they don't even know yet. And like the phone rings and it's them calling from the hospital or whatever. It's like they just have no idea where their children are at any point in time. It's, yeah. It yeah. feels very Gen X. <laughs> if you're, you're very familiar to those of us who are Gen X to have watched this and go, oh, I, I'm, I know that. That's the it's yeah, 10, yeah. 10 p.m. Do you know where your children are? <laughs> Do you know where your children are? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, um, yeah, so there's definitely. I, I do that. like. I, I, I was gonna say I do like how like uh, Kirsten actually calls that out at the beginning of season two, like oh, oh, when yeah. the, when she's like telling Sandy go get get him. You know, I'm tired of your hippie bullshit or whatever she says. <laughs> yeah, basically, yeah. that's what she says. <laughs> I'm tired of your hippie bullshit. We've got a responsibility. We have to be parents. Yeah. We can't. We can't just let this child do whatever they want. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. fantastic. He's also a little pervy. I, I, I wrote a little bit about this because I was I, I didn't uh, I didn't remember this being the case, but but there's definitely some some sort of moments there. You know, Sandy flirts with Marissa a little bit. He calls Summer hot <laughs> a couple of times, <laughs> like in a very enthusiastic sort of way, too, right? Like he's sort of commiserating with uh, with Seth about how hot his girlfriend is. And that's funny and, and cool, but maybe a little inappropriate. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's part of the hippie thing. You know, they're not parents. True. He's, uh, yeah. he's the, the buddy, uh, yeah. which is kind of – it is kind of cool in a way because, you know, it, it is uh, – a lot especially when these kids are, I mean, they're, they're what, 14 or 15 or whatever. I mean, that's not really old, but you're in that transition of getting to adulthood. Right. You know? So yeah, you need to teach so. them how to be adults, but they don't know how to be adults. <laughs> you can't just assume they'll figure it out. <laughs> you know, it was pre smartphone and pre ubiquitous internet. So it probably, you know, it was a li- it was a little bit closer to the way we grew up than sort of the way kids grew up today though. I think. Yeah. 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 But all right. So that's, uh, that's Sandy. Uh, and then, uh, and then, you know, our last sort of main character this season, although it's arguably not, he's not a, a series regular. He's just a recurring is uh, Jimmy Cooper. <laughs> and I call him Milhouse's dad. <laughs> so, 
uh, yeah, because he's he's basically Kirk Van Houten. He's uh, he's a hard luck loser, but you know he doesn't have the same sort of uh, down on his luck lifestyle that Kirk Van Houten has because he's you know continue continually falling backwards into money. Uh, he still gets to live in Newport, and then he eventually goes to Hawaii. And I mean, he he's he's to me the easiest character to laugh at in the show. <laughs> he he uh, he's easily the worst character in season one, in my opinion. And I think that he is just so aggressively negligent as a father that it, it's it's very frustrating. The thing that really sticks out to me, I mean, there's so much that sticks out to me about Jimmy Cooper, and I have a lot of a lot of little things we'll talk about as we go through some of the the occurrences of the show. But but the thing that sticks out to me the most is when he and uh, Julie are are have finally decided that they're getting divorced and he's moving out, and it happens to be the same weekend that the kids are going to. TJ Kirsten's like oh well you can't let her go to TJ without telling her and he's like you know what you're right let me call her on the cell phone and tell her that I'm getting divorced (laughs) while she's on her way to TJ and he thinks that's a good idea yeah your parents are getting divorced and I'm moving out I won't be here when you get back (laughs) well that yeah that goes back to the whole thing with the negligent parenting right so just just aggressively negligent (laughs) How does a guy like that end up in that? Like you're saying, how does he fall backwards into like status and money at that point? Because, I mean, he, I mean, he was basically stealing all that the, these people's money, right? So, he was, yeah. how, how does it? I, I, what would Julie or not Julie, but what would Kirsten see in a guy like that? Other than he's like a brilliant at manipulating and hiding his faults or his uh, missteps, well, right? Yeah, I mean, that's that's sort of what you have to be good at to impress women initially at least right <laughs> ultimately you know you 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 have to be you have there there should be some substance behind that at some point but but ultimately that's you know that's sort of what dating is it's putting on a kind of the the most polished most sort of uh focused approach i don't know yeah well i, I I, I guess what I'm asking is, you know, Kirsten probably saw that, but she would still remain friends with him. Oh, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah. you know, like, yeah, I see what you're saying. Uh, he lives, know. he lives next door, right? And he was her first love. Mm-hmm. And so there's, there's an element of that. I, I see what you're saying. That's not particularly realistic that these people <laughs> that Kirsten continues to associate with him, especially given his wife is Julie Cooper. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's right. Yeah. So I don't know, you know, like it's, it's one of those things where they, the, it is, I think a, a, like a fault in the, in his character as far as like you know like i'd like to see maybe he was really really good at one time as far as like making money for his clients or yeah like that, you know like you know so i think that i think they they kind of imply that he was right because everybody yeah. had their money invested with him and he was doing really well and then he kind of you know he made a couple of bad trades or whatever and then it kind of snowballed <laughs> and spiraled on him on his E Trade account, right? Exactly. <laughs> Doing it on the at home from home on E Trade with a with a twelve minute delay. Yeah, <laughs> jeez. I uh, I I remember watching this the first time and thinking, and I and I I even when I watched it the second time, you know, a few years ago, I remember watching it and thinking to myself, "Oh, Jimmy Cooper <gasps> has a gambling problem because he's uh-huh, he's yeah. always watching ESPN Classic or or watching some some." sort of sports on television and I'm like, and I, we knew he was in financial troubles before it all got revealed. You knew he's in financial troubles. You, you see him constantly watching sports on TV and you're like, Oh, he's got a, a gambling addiction and he's lost all their money to uh, bookies or whatever. I think that might've yeah. been a more interesting story. <laughs> I think so too. I actually yeah. think so too. And I like how they do establish, I mean, this is just another burden that Marissa has as a character. Like, you know, she has to deal, like, he doesn't want to deal with these agents who show up at the house. She's so supposed she to, has like, to answer the door. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. Yeah. Speaking of that scene, I want to talk about that scene for a second, because I have this, I have this uh, bullet point here called Sex Object Marissa. And that, in that scene is she's shot from behind with basically most of her hip exposed and her pants down, like halfway down her ass uh, when she's talking to her father. They're shooting her from basically like 
like center frame butt of Marissa on screen with Jimmy kind of in the background as she's talking to him. It's, mm-hmm. it's sort of the first instance of, of that sort of objectification of, of the high school girl that you see over and over and over and over again in this show. And, and I, it very much stuck out to me uh, yeah. on, on this watch. Well, even the like the wardrobe that these girls and maybe that was at the time, I think that was probably what was in style anyway. But just re- I remember like it was very like the clothing just for high school kids. It's just very revealing, like these True. skirts are really short. Yeah. I don't know, yeah. I'm like, wow, if that was your daughter, would you let her dress like that? You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's that's the other thing, right? It's like, okay, well, wait, is that the right vernacular? <laughs> is that the right, would you let her do that? Or would you encourage her to make better choices? It's like, it's tough there too, right? So, Well, it's the setting boundaries part again. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, and, but they, they talked about when they were casting Marissa, they, the, the character description of her was that she is the most beautiful girl in the world and she knows it. And that mm. is, yeah, that is what they were looking for when they cast her. That was their sort of character synopsis for her character. So that's interesting. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get back to the sex object Marissa stuff. Cause there's a bunch of that, but it's not just Marissa. It's also, you know, uh, summer, uh, in several scenes as well. And, uh, we'll talk a little bit about that and sort of like, again, is it problematic? Is it not problematic? And, you know, is it different, differently problematic when, when Summer, uh, Rachel Bilson's 24 years old in the scene versus when it's uh, Misha Barton and she's, she's 16? I think uh, the worst storyline in season one is the dual storyline between uh, Sandy and Rachel and Kirsten and Jimmy where the Cohen marriage is supposedly under duress from, from these external forces. I think it's a dumb storyline. I never bought it for a minute. I didn't buy it when, when I was watching the show the first time I bought it even less this time around. (coughs) It doesn't, it doesn't make sense to me. It's not, you know, it's one of those things where it's like, if, if Rachel, the, the partner at the law firm that Sandy's working at or the other associate at the law firm, whatever, which, whatever she is, the, yeah, yeah. if, if she were not actually trying to seduce Sandy and it was Kirsten's guilt that was being projected onto Sandy and made, and, and, and because Kirsten had loaned Jimmy Cooper that money and she was feeling bad about that and it felt like a betrayal. And so she was projecting onto Sandy. I think it's a way better storyline in that circumstance. I think that this, this clumsy sort of attempted monopolization of Sandy's time by Rachel, who, by the way, Sandy never really shows any significant interest in her whatsoever. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I think he pl- plays it pretty like, oh, you know, I'm a married man, you know, that, that yeah. whole thing. He does play, plays it perfectly, actually. He I doesn't mean, send really her mixed signals. It. He doesn't. Nope. He does, yeah, there's none of that. Yeah. And, and yeah. I, I think it's a way better storyline if it's Kirsten's guilt that's sort of amping her up on this instead of yeah. Rachel deliberately trying to destroy their marriage. I know. I mean, it's a, yeah. And I think that is like, I would agree. I think that's like one of the worst, uh, well, the, the least, most, I wouldn't even say most forgettable part as far as the, the season one is that because she's not, I can, uh, she's not as attractive as Kirsten, you no. know, physically, no, of and, course uh, not. you know, so, you know, I know, and and Sandy, and that's of the, course that's the, what matters. <laughs> well, yeah, most. if you have a side piece, exactly. if you have a side piece, that you have to go for the uh, you know. That's like the Monica Lewinsky problem, right? It's like why would he bang on? You hey, know, I'm like, not going to sit here. I'm not going to sit here and let you. Uh, Monica Lewinsky was adorable then and is adorable now. I will say. Oh, uh, uh, okay. You can say that. It doesn't mean it's true. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it. You think so? I don't know. Well, all right. I do. Well, I do. And she seems like a wonderful, lovely person also. That part is true. I, th- I, I think I can see that. Uh, but eh. <laughs> <laughs> but I would we don't back always agree to, on these, uh, on these topics. <laughs> what's that? No, we don't always agree dissent. on these topics. Yes, right. there is room, room for dissent. But uh, I think at least for the, for the character... 
uh, Rachel, whatever her name is. Um, God, like it would be annoying, actually. I think after I like just, just these transparent, like, uh, you know, 